I mean, I went from CAD drawing, prototype, to production, on the shelf, in five months, in less than five months. Not everybody can say that. If you are an irrigation professional, old or new, who designs, installs, or maintains high-end residential, commercial, or municipal properties, and you want to use technology to improve your business, to get a leg up on your competition, even if you're an old-school irrigator from the days of hydraulic systems, this show is for you. Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of The Sprinkler Nerd Show. I'm your host, Andy Humphrey. This is episode 62, and you just heard from our special guest today, Ken Kwiatkowski. Ken is the inventor of the grass hole system. We're going to hear all about how Ken invented that product, where he is right now, and what he hopes to achieve in 2022. And part of the reason that I wanted to talk with Ken and share his story with you is that I really feel like the landscape industry is very entrepreneurial and almost entrepreneurial by accident because a lot of you got into this business by mowing a lawn when you were eight years old or just getting started, not wanting to work for someone else, wanting to set your own schedule and wanting to have freedom in what you do. And so because of that, the landscape industry is just very entrepreneurial. And Ken's story is also entrepreneurial because he created this product. And as you just heard, he took it from zero to where he is now in less than five months. And I also want to mention that our connection was a little bit, it's not the best connection. Ken called in on his cell phone. So his, his quality isn't perfect, but I think it's good enough for you to get the idea of what he's working on, where he's at, and a little bit about his new product, the grass hole system. So let's jump right into this episode and welcome Ken to the show. Well, Andy, thanks for having me on the show. And uh, yeah, I love talking about my product. I think it, it's really a change of pace out there for what's currently being made. And I mean, better known, better manufactured right here in Bradenton, Florida. It doesn't get much better than that. Awesome. So before we get into the product, I want to give you some kudos because you were actually standing next to your product in the new product showcase area of the IA show. And a lot of the bigger manufacturers who have been at the show year after year after year stick the product there, but they don't put a representative there to tell people about it. So I appreciate you being there. That way you and I were able to meet up and I hope you met a lot of other interesting folks as well. You know, some of the other the new product vendors, we made that same observance and looking over at the bigger guys and they put their product there and then they walk away. Unfortunately, you know, the judges voted uh, for their product and uh, really our product should have been mine and a couple other people should have been in a whole new category. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way the ball bounces and IA uh, is looking at changing that. From an entrepreneurial standpoint, I mean, we're, we're not multi-million dollar company and we don't pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to market our product and we don't have the resources like these other people do. We should have been a category or our own. I, I think I should have been the best named company at the show anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get into that too. And it's likely that I'm just guessing that you don't have a huge pile of money in that for a lot of small companies like yourself, just footing the bill to be in that area, to fly there, to get a hotel when you're launching a new product is all expenses that, you know, really a lot of small companies don't have. Absolutely. Uh, I come from a background of public accounting, big five, uh, work for some big companies like Daimler, Mercedes, Benz, GEG Capital, while I was doing my stint with Arthur Anderson, other big companies like Knight Ritter of Miami. But you kind of learn, uh, I'm, like my wife said, I broke the uh, uh, mold when it came to bean counters. Because I'm definitely out of the pocket. I look at all aspects as a CFO of all companies and how they run, how they work. But I did learn a lot of new things with patenting my product, you know, more of the marketing and the artwork. But you, you go through your pain. And, you know, I'm here to help other people. I'm actually going to be teaching veterans on how to set up corporations and structures and so forth. And if they're getting into manufacturing, I can help them along those lines. That's great. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know where to get started. And if they can have a, a mentor to help guide them and give them some direction. That can be a huge help for sure. And building the right team around you. I do not have any employees, but I know the right connections that I've made over the last 
28 plus years in in doing what I do. And uh, my illustrator, he happens to be a friend of mine. I've known for 10, 15 years. You know, I send him stick drawings and I go, this is kind of where I'm going with this. And this is how I want Angus McGrath to look. And he goes, awesome. Okay. And we come up with drawings. I send him six figures. He comes up with these elaborate things. So we're making Angus McGrath, who's my character for the grass hole, similar to the Geico guy. Obviously, doing a whiteboard takes money. Doing commercials takes money. Obviously, we'd like more of a character aspect, just like the Geico listeners. So when you see Angus, you know it's a grass hole. <laughs> nice. Well, I can't wait to learn more about Angus here. So before we do learn more about Angus, where did the first original seed or spark, interest, thought, et cetera, come for the grass hole system? You know, I had it in my head probably about three, four years before I even started making drawings and prototypes. I mean, my some of my original prototypes were made out of paper. Then I kind of moved and I uh, got some material from Lowe's and bought some PVC piping and uh, a flexible shower of plastic material. And, and going back and forth between the size of how, the, how big the dish should be, uh, I do have some ideas for the future with, and I, I don't want to fill it out right now, but the biggest thing was I, I had cement donuts in the yard. And, you know, they sink, they crack, they break. And I, I saw one sprinkler head. It probably had three cement donuts in there because they just eventually sink down. And so you throw another one on there. I like to know where my sprinkler heads are so I can see, make sure how they work. Then I started looking at, I mean, there's plastic donuts out there. They sell them for three dollars a piece. They're made in China. They're they're junk. And on my video, I, I do a comparative analysis with a cement donut, a plastic donut, and I don't want to name the company that makes them. And, and my grass hole. I mean, my grass hole is ABS plastic with a UV deterrent. It's the same plastic that's used in your car buffer. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I don't think for the durability. We we are testing it in, in colder environments where it snows. Uh, I got several out in Utah, a couple dozen boxes there, um, Colorado, up in New Hampshire, and New Jersey. So we're all kind of just seeing how it goes. I mean, but plastic, you hit it when it's cold. It, it, it is fragile. So we'll, we'll see how good it lasts the winter time. Yeah, awesome. I think we may have jumped the gun here. My mistake. We're going to continue. The um, You mentioned cement, donut, and the other word donut. Let's just start back with what the... What the hell is a grass hole system? Describe your product to us. Well, a grass hole system, I, I took the best out of all worlds. So the grass hole, the, a revolutionary patented sprinkler head protection. It, it goes around your sprinkler head. The tube keeps the sprinkler head aligned so it doesn't fall over. It keeps it erect. And what I did, I put a disc around the outside of the tube so it helps it sinking in the ground like cement donuts do. And the draft of the tube is drafted slightly. So these aren't going to blow away in a hurricane. They're going to stay in the ground. Now, on the back side of the disc, I, I put actually put preparations in the design pattern. Whereas if it's near your driveway or sidewalk or near your house, you just score along the preparation, snap it off, and, and you got custom fit. You got There's over 1,200 different configurations you could do. Wow. So if you're a contractor, this is a one size fits all, less shelf space, keep a case or two or 10 on the truck kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, my uh, The current grass hole will fit any sprinkler head up to three inches. Now, if I was going to move to a golf course where their sprinkler heads are five or six inches, we just change the mold. That's not a big deal. And we can make them in any color, which is the best part of my patent. So if you have reclaimed water, you can make them in purple. And I thought, you know, hey, for fire stations, why don't we make them in red? Or police stations, we make them in blue or schools uh, blue and hospitals white. We can make them any color under the rainbow you want. Yeah. So I got a question for you. A lot of people have ideas. You know, we, we sit around the bar, we have some drinks and some cocktails, and ideas just start flowing how did you decide to go from idea to, you know what, I'm going to take a stab at actually making this thing? Well, what I've learned along my travels, the best thing to do, okay, so you have some drawings. You go visit some manufacturers, uh, and I always advise people to have a non-compete agreement. So when you're talking to them, that they're not going to take your idea and run off with it. 
Obviously, bigger companies can be in a court of law because they got more money. But but it just gives them insight that you know you know you're you're, you're serious about it. Here's a non compete. Let's find it, and you discuss your product. The next step is really getting somebody to do the CAD two and CAD three drawing and conceptualize it. You mentioned a word that I wasn't familiar with. You said CAD two and CAD three. I'm familiar with CAD, but what does two and three mean? The different dimensionals of what a engineer will draw up for the manufacturer in order to build a mold. Okay. So if it, is it two-dimensional drawing and a three-dimensional drawing? Is that what it means? Exactly. Exactly. Cool. So how, I, I guess I still want to unpack a little bit about how you decided to put money down on this idea. You know, something in your head, your gut, your intuition told you, I'm going to put some money behind this and I'm going to take a step forward to making this product. You know, I'll take a step back. I thought about this and, um, you know, my dad had passed away a few years ago and sitting on my lanai and just thinking about it. And, you know, I could just hear his voice. He just says, Ken, just do it. Just do it. And, and from there, it just inspired me. And, and <clears throat> I put it all back together. I had just sold a uh, plumbing co commercial plumbing company that I was involved with. So I, I did have some I did have some cash on hand. Um, it took me a little while. I wanted to use a veteran manufacturer. So making several calls around the different Bay, uh, Tampa Bay area, I did find one, and he was only three miles from my house. It, amazing. So went over there, met with Mike at Spectrum Custom Molds and Manufacturing, and he goes, you know, the best thing to do is build a prototype. We, we You really should build a prototype to see the functionality based on your drawing because nothing's perfect in the drawing. So, I mean, you're spending, you know, 2500 bucks to build a prototype, but I'm telling you, it, it, it's a blessing and it will actually save you tons. Because if I ship my, if I ship, uh, had it made in China or something that like that, with my drawings the way they were, I would have never got a product the way I have it. Today. Right. Yeah, you were able where, to kind of more rapid where, prototype instead of try it, ship it, wait, try it, ship it, wait. Yeah, and uh, the the key was because we wanted to make the grass hole stackable. How am I going to put you know it's four inches high and with the disc it's seven inches at the top? How am I going to you know this needs to be stackable? So that's why we incorporated that draft in there so we're able to make it stackable. And with the first prototypes, we're, we're calculating. It's like, okay, we wanted to fit it, you know, 10 in the box that was maybe 15 inches high. And at the end of the day, you know, we went through the prototype and we did the draft. It's like, wow, we're not going to be able to stack. We could only stack five high because I'm looking at the whole of it. It's like, well, this is not going to fit every sprinkler head we want. I ran the load that I bought every sprinkler head that's possibly on the market. And it's like, okay, this one fits, this one doesn't, this one fits, this one fits. All right, let's make it up to the largest one was like 2.81. Okay, let's make the opening dynamic OD, you know, at least three inches. So I had to change my whole box from the single box and double wide it. And we were able to stack five high on each side and, and put them inside the box. So it was. So, and, you know, I kind of, we had kind of had to go back to the drawing board, take all the graphics off the, uh, off the box that would stack 10 and move it to the ba a box that stacks two five stacks, whereas to say, so it still fits 10. Um, in my box, I actually have an opening. So, hey, look inside, you can see the product. But, you know, the bigger the box, it actually made it a little cleaner with the graphics. But it, it was trial and error with marketing companies. Everybody says they're an expert, but you know, at the end of the day, when I'm babysitting the babysitter, why am I paying for it? And I, I probably fired three or four marketing people because they they told me, oh, we could do this, we could do that. But at the end of the day, I, you know, you got to pick up, grab the bull by the horns, and do it yourself. Yeah, I'm you got to, like you said, ju just do it. I, I want to come back to that too because. I, it really resonated with me. Sometimes you can get stuck in your head and you can overthink things. And sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to don't think, just do. <laughs> and it seems like you, you just, that's what you did. You, you took this, the first action step and you 
went down this path of creating the product. And that's the path a lot of people don't take. They just get stuck in their head or they think of reasons that they can't. And then 20 years later, they'll sit there again with a cocktail and they'll say, that I had that idea. That was my idea. <laughs> had, had, <laughs> right. had. And sometimes you just got to grab yourself by the bootstraps, and that's how entrepreneurs are. They're, they're risk takers with, but you try to limit your risk and, and, and your cash and try to budget it out. Obviously, as a bean counter, I'm pretty good with budgeting things. But, you know, I had to borrow from savings here and there, you know, in order to make it as me. Right now, sales are doing pretty good. Uh, I mean, I went from CAD drawing, prototype, to production, on the shelf, in five months, in less than five months. Not everybody can say that. And everybody's like, oh, my God, that's, that's incredible. But, you know, if you're focused on what you're doing, and that includes the, the packaging. Uh, I have grass hole teeth. Okay, what are we putting in the insert? I have additional instructions I put in the box. I created grass hole stickers. Okay, now we need shipping boxes. Okay, so what can we work with and working with boxing companies? Okay, uh, what boxes can we use? Okay, I got a standard box that will fit six. I got a standard box that will fit two. Oh, I got to get a standard. I got to I gotta actually make a, a customized box that will fit one. But it's going through these logistics. It's, it's like how many boxes should I order of what size? But it's not only that. I mean, you come up with a corporate name. I knew it was going to be Grasshole, but the only thing I get out of GoDaddy, and you want to match your corporation name to your GoDaddy and your website as close as you possibly can. So when you're setting up a new corporation, you want to look at those two things. So that's why I have Grasshole System. That's what I was able to find in GoDaddy. And um, yeah, I totally, totally agree. It's kind of like wayfinding. You you need to make it easy for people to know who you are, what you do, and how to find you. So let me ask you about, again, sort of a as, as a bean counter. When you got started, I know that some entrepreneurs just go for it. They don't even, they don't really even think about what it's going to cost them. And that can be a mistake. Uh, it could also be a blessing because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And if you had known what it would cost, you might not have started. So did you put together any kind of financial modeling before you kicked it off? Oh, absolutely. you got to know your costs, and this is where you talk to the manufacturer on uh, what's this going to cost. You, you have to project some things on packaging and warehousing and just things, and you got to – how are you going to sell this now? Okay, so you got all your costs. How are you going to sell it? Oh, um, you know, and, and this is where it sometimes takes – Six to 12 months. Yeah. Did you put together a forecast in terms of how many units do you have to sell to get your initial investment of capital back? Absolutely. And, you know, I haven't gotten to the point of actually uh, repaying myself back, but I'm kind of at the teeter-totter where kind of netting out to zero, which is a plus with my sales at this current time. I mean, I'm booming with uh, Mike Lindell's My Store. And uh, Amazon's kind of cranking away. and Well, and that's why we have you here on the podcast, because this is the largest sprinkler podcast in the absolute entire world. And after this episode goes live, Ken, you're going to be rolling in it. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> well, hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not rolling in the grass hole. But, you know, my big thing, is I give back to veteran organizations around town. And the more I sell, the more I give back. Uh, 941 Vets, I uh, sponsored Platinum Sponsor for their clay shoot event. Uh, SRQ Vets, I kindly donate to them for Toys or Tots. Uh, the Veteran Ranch, which helps veterans who have PTSD. I was fortunate enough to go on the ride there. As well as National Cemetery here in Sarasota, Florida. And, and the more, obviously, the more I make, the more I could give back and uh, give those give those veterans a hand up, not a hand out. And that's what people want. Hey, teach a man to fish, he can fish for life. You give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my philosophy with all of this and inspiring other people to do kind of what I do. And yeah. hopefully I can help them along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So with sales in mind, I do see on your website that you are available on the shelf at Ace Hardware. Can you tell us about how you got into Ace Hardware? 
Well, that, that was a fortunate turn of events where uh, we both have the, a mutual banker friend. Um, he has since retired, and we kind of did an agreement where it was a consignment agreement where I put my product on the shelves, and we, we kind of came up with a percentage. We split it 50-50. And, um, you know, once in a while, I go, I'll go outside the store and kind of do a demo on my product. Excellent. And is it fair to say... At this point, you are um, looking, I don't know if I should say actively looking, but you're looking for other distributors, potentially national in the wholesale Lana landscape industry to pick up your product? Absolutely. I met some key players at the IA convention in San Diego who I've talked to previously and I've met some new ones. You know, Heritage did a great event out there. Uh, Talked to those guys. Horizon, another great group of guys. I had talked to Rainbird in the past, but Really, I think uh, catering is the way to go. I mean, they're over on the east coast of Florida. Their products made right in, it used to be actually made in the United States, and they moved their factory down to Dominican Republic. So they have no issues with supply chains and their boats, their supplies sitting on, you know, out in the harbor off of California there, which is key. And that's to keep out my product. My product, uh, the plastic comes out of Oklahoma City and, and Texas, I mean. It doesn't get much better than that. And we kind of mix the plastic just like you mix paint. Okay, you got the clear and you put the green in there. And so that's why I say we can make them in purple or any color you want. Hmm. It's just like mixing paint. Hmm. And uh, as it relates to manufacturing, are there minimum orders that you have to meet every time you put in an order? Not, I don't mean a contract. I mean you as a manufacturer. Do you have MOQs? Uh, what I do and uh, – my manufacturer's kind of like family. He's he's a veteran from the 82nd Airborne, even though I'm Navy. We get along very well. Um, I keep I keep my my stuff there. We we make so many, and what we do is we leave it on pallets. As I need them, I take them. I'll ship them to whomever, or I'll ship directly out of there. If I'm out of town or busy, they will actually ship for me because I do have my own UPS. Um, so when sales go on. Uh, if you're buying off my website, it auto- automatically generates a UPS label. So if I'm out of town, they can just say, hey, here's your order. Here's the UPS label. They'll slap it on. UPS will come pick it up. Awesome. And they'll do the, and they'll do the same thing with Amazon. Hey, my inventory is a little short. I can't get, I won't be home for another week. If I'm out traveling, uh, can you put together the FBO and get those shipped up to Amazon? Send them, you know, send them 30 units or whatever the case may be. Okay. And if a contractor listening to this, you know, we kind of just talked about that you're looking, actively looking to get into distribution where you might be on a shelf someplace locally. If somebody is listening to this either here at the end of 2021 or next year or the year after that, and they want to buy just direct, uh, it does look like you do sell direct on your website, right? Uh, or they call me. I will offer special contractor prices. And the key is, I'm looking for that white label. If uh, and that's why I'm talking like K Rain and those other guys out there. If they want a white label and put K Rain on my grass hole, hey, I'm open to that. And as long as we can maintain the manufacturing, we'll ship directly to wherever warehouse they want, and they could redistribute to their distributors. Okay, makes uh, that makes total sense. I, you know, OEMing a product and having your own brand is is done quite a lot in this industry, and it can be a great way to help you scale and get out to market. And actually, with that in mind, can you talk to us about your patent process a little bit? Yeah, that was a little little tough because my manufacturer uses a uh, patent attorney out in California. You know, I talked to him briefly. I, I didn't really have a good deal, even though he, he did well for my, my manufacturer. I had met Doug Terry. He's a local, uh, actually, he's a trademark attorney, but his firm, Schumacher, does, you know, the patents and so forth. I had met Doug, I don't know, 10 plus years ago. At, there's different events around town and, and met him. And I started talking with him. He goes, yeah, I can help you out with your trademarks. And we do have a patent attorney at Schumacher. He's out in Ohio. And his name happens to be Doug, too. So we made a great relationship with them. And I've actually given them additional businesses and re- referrals to them. So initially, I try to do the design patent myself. If you're not part of the good, bo- good old boys club at the USPTO office, 
good luck because they were always kicking back my design patent. It wasn't right space. It wasn't the right font. So, uh, cause I wanted to start doing trademarks too. So I, I go, Doug, you know, let, let's just have a quick call here and having problems. And he goes, you need to talk to Doug Miller. He'll, he'll do the patent. So for a reasonable fee, he, he just, it took him probably maybe an hour, fix my design patent. And I go, Hey, let's file the provision of utility patent. Okay. You know, that's $2,500, $3,000. So my patent is patent pending. I got two patents. The, we just filed for the full-blown utility patent Oh, just recently. So, you know, to file a patent, it, it could range anywhere from 7000 up to 20000 It all depends on your product and the intricacies of the product, the design, and so forth. You want an attorney that kind of understands your product. You need to spend time with them on the phone so they... I mean, my product may be looking simple, but there's a lot of thought that goes into it. I've got a lot of compliments from different different kind of like similar shark tanks that I was at at the hardware store in Las Vegas back in October and some recent ones. They go very simple, but, you know, there's a lot of thought. I mean, it, it does a multiple purpose thing. Mm -hmm. there, there's products on the market that do, do two different things, and I encompass them all in one. But let, we'll go back to the, the patent thing. So it's finding... It's like anything else. You need to be comfortable with the attorney. Then they're not just going to, you know, file your patent. Oh, we got to do a revision. We got to do a revision. Before you know it, you're, you're 30 grand and you still don't have a patent or a trademark. So, anyways, uh, I had them file. Grassel is a registered trademark now. Angus McGrath, he's a registered trademark. And my slogan, I filed that later on. Don't be an arsehole. Let's call it Grassel. We just filed. To make it registered, so it has to go through the vetting process initially. So you got the TM, but then it goes to the U.S. Patent Attorney Office. They got to go through everything in their book to make sure that you can actually register it, that nobody else has claimed that. Mm -hmm. So it's doing your research, and you know you can go to the U.S. PTO office and look up stuff. Sometimes it's difficult to look, but you can pull up names and what people, everybody else has used for names in the past, and determine whether I want to file for that name or not. Yeah. So now that you mentioned Angus, I would love to hear the story of who is Angus, why Angus, where did Angus come from, why is Angus <laughs> Irish, etc. <cetera. laughs> Well, Angus, Angus is actually Scottish. Scottish, okay. So, originally, so I started thinking about grass. Then I started thinking about golf because there is another product that is related to golf for my grass hole product, but I haven't, I, I didn't venture down that road. So I, we created Angus McGrath, the Scottish dude, golf originating in Scotland. I, I think he kind of sells itself. Some people say he's a leprechaun, and I go, how do you get leprechaun from Angus? How do you get Irish dude from, or leprechaun from, you know, he's not an Irish dude. He's definitely Scottish. And, and so we put a little, you know, we put a little bonnet, we put the kilts on there and uh, go with the G8, you know, Grassel. I think we put that on his belt or on his little sachet there. But, uh, you know, we put a, we, we have him doing different things, a Santa hat on, holding a candy cane or w whatever the case may be. I try to do a sale every month on my website. Uh, I think it's reasonable. You know, people go to Amazon. Well, I get free shipping because I'm on Prime. That's great. You know, they, they, Amazon does take a fee. And if you buy them on my website, 100% goes to me versus paying, you know, 20, 30% to Amazon or to my store or those people. So then I'm able to support local veterans. I know sometimes I offer free shipping and handling. But with the cost of fuel going through the roof, it, it's it's hard to offer free shipping. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell people, okay, if you buy two boxes, I'll give you free shipping. You're going to do what you need to do. It's not about the profit at first. You want to sell. You want to be – and I, I'm growing this thing, obviously, organic because I don't have a, uh advertising budget of a million dollars to go out. I mean, I'm out on YouTube. I, I mean, I got my little – advertising i do there but you know i'm i'm only spending a couple hundred dollars a month on my advertising where other people with bigger companies you know they can spend a million dollars a month i mean i'm not ready for prime time yet but if i get the right person or distributor behind me 
or even an equity partner, obviously they're going to blow this thing out of proportion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's all in good time. You, you just got to have the faith in your product. And it, it's so great, like yourself and other people. What a great name. What a great product. And, and that gives you incentive to keep moving. Yeah. Well, that's a good um, good segue here. I think, you know, as we sort of wrap up discussion, I want to just, number one, thank you for being open, transparent, uh, sharing all the information that is you might consider under the hood about how you got started, your process, what it took. If you know, I think the last question I have for you is, if you had a crystal ball looking at 2022, what would the perfect 2022 look like for you? You know, it'd be somebody wanting to white label it and just take it to the next level with me producing it and maybe go out and be their spokesman for it and travel around to the different trade shows and, and spending time with veterans and helping them do the same thing as I did. And if I pay it forward to them and they pay it forward to others, I mean, the multiplier effect is, is just huge. I mean, at the end of the day, we came to this world naked. We leave naked with not a dime in our pocket. So, that you know, you want to live good. You want to have a halfway decent car, food on the table. But at the end of the day, you don't leave with any money. So you try to help your fellow man. And that's all I can say as a Christ follower. Well, yep. I, I think that, you know, what you just sort of not asked for, but what you just pictured for 2022 is absolutely possible. I think there are a dozen different manufacturers that could white label your product. And if you keep doing what you're doing, Good things happen to those that keep trying. So I think it's totally possible. And uh, just yep. want to thank you again for, for sharing and uh, joining me on the show. I would just wish you the best in 2022. And people have any questions, they could just send me emails. It's, uh, it's on my website. It's go to orders at rapsolesystems.com. I believe I actually have my cell phone listed. And, and you can find me out on LinkedIn. Uh, Grassholes on LinkedIn and he's on Facebook along with my profile as well. Great stuff, Ken. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing the Grasshole system on a store near me soon. Absolutely. Merry Christmas to all. And thank you, Andy. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, guys. For those of you that have listened to this podcast episode all the way to the end, I would like to invite you to join us in the Sprinkler Nerd private community on Facebook. The Sprinkler Nerd private community is only for green industry professionals. So if you are an irrigation technician, a foreman, if you own the business, if you cut grass, if you install landscapes, maybe you install decks or patios or landscape lighting, or you are a sports turf manager for a university or a school system or municipality, please join us in the Sprinkler Nerd community. You can just search Sprinkler Nerd on Facebook and there'll be a couple questions that you can answer to make sure that you are in fact working in the green industry as a professional, and then we would love to see you on the inside. I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our newest members of the community that have joined since the last podcast episode. I was going to read these names at the beginning of the episode, but then I thought that it wasn't completely relevant, so I'm going to save these for the end, and my hope is to introduce everyone to the newest members at the end of each podcast episode. So if you're listening to this all the way to the end, here are the newest members of the Facebook community. We have Gavin from Skyview Landscapes, John from Corby Landscape, Robert from Signature Landscape, David from Sprinklers Blown Out, Babaker coming to us all the way from Qatar. He's an irrigation engineer in Qatar. We have Gerardo from Landscape Irrigation Specialists, Hector from Blue Cedar Landscape, Kenneth from All Wet and Green Irrigation, DJ from Aqua, Steven from Wyo Scapes, Chris from DPS, Wayne from TSI Irrigation, Brian from That Guy Irrigation, Adam from Outdoor Specialty Services, Mo from ES Landscaping, Brandon from Georgia Sprinkler, Michael from Decimal Engineering, Apichai from Water Pro, Francisco from SciTech, Steve from Hyde Sprinkler Service, Tony from the Lingo Group, Chris from Metro Sprinklers, Jorge from Environmental Horticulture and Landscaping, Mark from MDL Landscaping, Greg from Dependable Landscaping, Tobern from Land Horizon, Daniel from DJF Irrigation, 
Alex from Stanton Lawn Services, Mike from Elite Sprinkler Professionals, Alejandro from AP Sprinkler Service, and Jenny from Rainbird. Welcome to the community, everyone. I look forward to chatting with you behind closed doors and learning from each other. So again, thank you for listening to this episode all the way to the end, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.